Hello, I'm glad you found us on YouTube today. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Concord's Morning Prayers for December 21st, 2020. Now, I thought I'd record outside today to take in the brisk morning air of the first day of winter. Plus, you know, if it adds a little rosiness to my cheeks, that couldn't be a bad thing, right? I, I just want to make sure you understand that below the video, down there, are some links that you're going to want to check out. First, there's a link to today's digital bulletin. That way you can follow along if you'd like. Second, there's a link to an email where you can send prayer requests. Now, these can be included here in this video uh, series or just by our pastors and our prayer team. Just let us know in your email which you'd prefer. And then there's a subscribe button down there, and that's important for new people because if you subscribe, you won't miss out on anything that we put out from morning prayers to Sunday services to, to special worship music. And I hope since you found us, you'll share videos from here with your friends and your family. Finally, there's a link to a uh, place where you can show your support for this ministry by donating to First Presbyterian Church Concord and keeping this vital ministry in downtown uh, open and, and alive and helping people the best we can. Now let's begin. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. From Psalm 51. You created the day and the night, O oh God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You made summer and winter. Psalm 74. Today's morning psalm is Psalm 119, verses 1 through 16. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You've commanded your precepts to be kept, O God, diligently, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes, then I shall not be put to shame. Having my eyes fixed on all of your commandments, I will praise you with an upright heart. When I learn your righteousness and your ordinances, I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me, Lord. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you, God. Do not let me stay away from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in your way of your decrees as much as any riches. I will meditate on your precepts and I will fix my eyes on your ways, God. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Today's scripture is from Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 18 and 19. You shall put these words of mine in your heart and your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you're at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you rise. Today's reflection is going to be pretty quick. When we look at this psalm that we just read and the scripture that we just read, it's very clear that God wishes us to remember and to obey his statutes. Carrying the Deuteronomical text to today, I wouldn't expect any of us to bind these ordinances on our hands or you know, put them up on our foreheads as an emblem, but we should teach them to our children, and we should talk about them with our friends and our family, and we should lie down with them, and we should wake up with them on our heart. Now, the best way that I know how to do this 
is to remain in God's Word. And when I say remain in the Word, I don't mean just read it. I mean study it. Try to understand what the original context was. Bring it into today's context and try to apply it to our lives as we live them today. Ask yourself, why was it written? To whom was it written? When was it written? And what was the application? There are so many examples in scripture that are archaic, that they just don't apply to our lives today. For example, we're not gonna go sacrifice animals at the temple. However, we are going to bring our time, talents, and treasures to the church. Not every law in scripture is relevant today. Like I know if I tried to send my daughters outside the camp every time they were on their menstrual cycle, my life would be pretty difficult, to say the least. It wouldn't be good for me. So the point is, we need to discern with the help of the Holy Spirit what is required of us today. And Jesus summed it up pretty well when he gave us his command. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, they will know that you are my disciples. Jesus famously speaks of love and how it fulfills all the laws and the prophets. So my friends, in, in this season of, of expectation of the return of Jesus and, and the joy of, of his birth, let us remember to love one another. Let's teach that to our children. Let's go to bed and rise again with love in our hearts and on our minds. Amen. As we enter into prayer and intercession, I ask you to join me. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, O God, and we will live this day in joy and in praise. We praise you, God, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially, we thank you, God, for the miracle of life and the wonder of living it. In particular, Lord, we, we praise you for the blessings that are coming to us in this day and the resources of the earth. Lord, we praise you for the gifts of creative vision and skillful craft, the treasure that's stored up in every human life. And we also pray, Lord, for others. God, we claim your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world. And we commit ourselves to care for those and love those around us in your name. Especially, we pray for those who work for the benefit and the reconciliation of others, Lord. We pray for those who can't work today for whatever reason. We pray, Lord, for those who teach and those who learn. We pray for people who are poor, Lord and people who are rich. We pray for the church in, in the world and in Europe, and we pray for those, Lord, that you've given to us for in particular to pray. We pray for Pastor Johanna's health, Lord. As she enters into this next season of surgery and recovery, we pray for Lo Noel Blunt, Lord. We pray for the comfort of Joyce McCollum's family, my family, and for Ed Stevenson's family, and for Harold Lund and his family, for Luella Beck's family, and for Carol Wolfsdale's brother-in-law, Larry's family, Lord. We give thanks for Jonathan Honestead's wellness and for Christine and Joan's healing. Lord, as you cause the sun to rise, you bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel all darkness. Give us grace, Lord, to reflect Christ's glory and let his love show in our deeds and his peace shine in our words and his healing in our touch that all may give him praise now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to leave this space of scripture, prayer, and reflection, don't forget to step outside this evening and try to catch the Christmas star. As the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn align for the first time in like 800 plus years. I pray tonight it's crystal clear so that we can all get a great view of this celestial event that will remind us of the time when Jesus was born. Friends, may the God of hope fill us with all the joy and the peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Be blessed. Stay safe. Keep well. Now let's go forth in otherworldly love. Amen.